Now the phrase, good things come in small packages, is typically reserved for men like me with small penises that try to lure women into bed. However, Asus should invent a new phrase. Great things come in even smaller packages. Let's go. So first up, a lot of people leave this to last. First thing I want to tell you is how much it's going to set you back. This will cost you in the UK, you can figure out in dollars, it's actually cheaper in dollars because it's American, I don't know, tax purposes. The Zenfone 10 for this 16 gigabyte, 512 gigabytes of storage will cost you 819 pounds. However, if you order before the 31st of July, I believe, you'll get it for 70 pounds off, so 749 pounds. Now again, that's for the full spec'd out half terabyte storage, 16 gigabyte of RAM, if you want to save a bit of money, you can get the 256 gigabyte version with 16 gigabytes of RAM, or you can get the 8 gigabyte version with 128 gigabytes of storage. If you're not a heavy phone user, and let's be honest, I don't think the most avid tech gamer is buying a 5.9 inch screen. I don't think someone that is constantly consuming media on their commute or multitasking is buying the Asus Zenfone 10. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, maybe for a young person, an older person, 128 gig of storage might be fine. And you can pick that up for, I believe, 619, £619. Pounds. Now that puts the Asus Zenfone 10 right back in the market with the Google Pixel 7 and the Nothing Phone 2. <clears throat> now, if you haven't seen any of my content on the Nothing Phone 2 yet, I'm not all that impressed, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually quite disappointed with it. And there's a few reasons that I'll probably cover in this video that can give away why I'm not impressed with this. So the first thing I want to talk about is that form factor, the build quality. It's Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, it's a plastic back or polycarbonate they'll call it, with an aluminium rail all the way around. It feels super light at 172 grams, and it's around about 11 millimeters, 10 millimeters thick. So thin, super light, with Gorilla Glass Victus, pretty durable. And I am a huge fan of these kind of, I was gonna say eco leather backs, it's obviously it's plastic, but it has got like a rough textured feel. So grip wise, obviously fingerprints are never gonna go on it. I really like the design of this. And that includes the dual camera design. I really like that. That makes it look like a flagship device in my opinion. And since I've mentioned cameras, let's talk about them. There's only two, sadly. There's a wide 50 megapixel, with six axis stabilization or six axis gimbal stabilization i think they're calling it essentially it's got like a mini gimbal inside which i've got a video here quite impressive for context i am like jogging behind my son on his bike but you'd never know from the footage and that is not in a gimbal, that is just the phone. So yeah, impressed with that. And also the photos it produces, I've only taken a couple, I'll save more for my full review. Pretty good, really impressed with the wide angle lens. It's a Sony 765 sensor, I believe. Does the job more than adequately. And the only other lens you get is an ultra wide, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, which does produce fantastic shots providing you don't want to take macro shots. This is the first kind of cross in the box beside the Zenfone 10. And don't worry, there's only two crosses, I think. But this is a big one. For me, I enjoy taking photos. The reason I buy a flagship phone, typically, whether it be the S23 Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, Pixel 7 Pro, I'll stop naming phones now, but I enjoy the cameras. I like taking photos and videos. And where this is definitely let down is macro. I know macro's kind of a gimmick for most, but it's not even macro. Think of just focusing. 
The Zenfone 9 has an ultra wide angle, 30 megapixels, same as this. I think exact same as this, but with autofocus. That means you can get super close into a subject and get a macro fold. When you compare my iPhone 13 Pro ultra wide macro shot to this Zenfone 10, looks like you're looking through the bottom of a milk bottle. It's not got all focus. They've literally taken the time to remove the autofocus feature from their ultra wide angle. I cannot think for the life of me why that's a thing. Now, a couple of other gripes that I'll just include in that big cross is a front facing camera. So for context, the rear can shoot at 4K 30 and 60 frames per second. It can also do 8K at 24 frames per second. Who's going to use 8K? Again, if you're an avid photographer or videographer, you're probably not buying a dual camera phone, particularly not the Asus Zenfone 10. Why they wouldn't just sacrifice 8K on the back, but make the front facing selfie camera 4K? Yes, like most Chinese smartphone manufacturers, they've decided to sacrifice a 4K lens for 1080p. Again, as someone that likes to use his camera right now, I'm shooting this video with a smartphone using the front facing 4K camera so I can get videos with quite good quality. 1080p just doesn't give me that sharpness and clarity. And that's really disappointing because remember, it's still over 800 pounds for the top spec version. That's a refurbished iPhone 13 Pro Max, cost wise. Just want to interrupt this video to say a massive thank you to every single one of you that has taken the time to hit the subscribe button. My tiny, small tech channel has surpassed 5,000 subscribers, which for me I'd really have liked to achieve by Christmas this year. So the fact that I'm like five months ahead of schedule, it's all down to you having the patience watching me try to improve my content and quality of what I'm producing for you. So yeah, really appreciate it. It does mean a lot. Um, and if you are watching this and you're not part of the old average dad army, then hit subscribe, hit the like button and comment down below. And if you're a Newcastle fan, especially you, why have you not subscribed yet to an army? Back to the video. So moving on from the cameras, which where, you know, a bit hit and a bit miss. I want to talk about the actual display itself. Zenfone have been, or Asus, have been quite smart here because they have labelled this a 144 hertz Super AMOLED display. Now, please don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic 5.9 inch display. It's not 144 hertz though, is it Asus? It's 120 hertz, which is still perfect. The reason they can get away with calling it 144 hertz is because in certain games, it will go up to 144. But again, don't think by any means you're getting a 144 hertz all the time. For anybody thinking, what the hell is he talking about? Essentially, it's the number of times this refreshes every second. The higher the number, the smoother the feeling going through the UI. 120, 144 negligible, just say it's 120 hertz ASUS. Now I guess if we're talking the display is good, I have to talk about a bit of a downside to it. This is a new panel. This is a brand new phone. We are now getting phones that go up to two and a half thousand nits of brightness. Fold phones that are getting 15 or 1600 nits of brightness from the inside display, which is like plastic coated. This glass panel, 1100 nits peak brightness. In direct sunlight, you will not be able to read this phone clearly. Make no mistake, if you live in a sunny country like Spain or Italy, probably not for you because you're going to get a lot of sunlight. Now for me in Dreek Riri, Scotland, it's grey a lot, so I could, I could get by with this display. But 1100 nits, again, it feels like a decision Asus had made to cut corners, and I also, for that reason, don't understand why. You're still charging £800. Now, 
to an area of the Asus Zenfone 10 that nobody can find fault with. If you find a fault, you're just a hater. Shut up. It's battery life. The Asus Zenfone 10, while being only 172 grams, which FYI is 3 grams heavier than the Zenfone 9, has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery. That is quite impressive. Typically, you would get phones of this form factor with three and a half to 3,900 milliamps. So the fact they've squeezed 4,300 milliamp hours into here and added for the first time in the Zen phone wireless charging at 15 watts to keep the weight down, very impressed. Now, some people are going to nitpick this, but it's only 30 watts wire charging with the charger including the box, so big tick. And while I'm talking about the box contents, you also got a bumper case, you get the cable, you get a manual which is thicker than the phone, random, and then you get that 30 watt brick. Now for me, I know there are Android phones out there that charge at 240 watts. If this phone takes an hour to charge, then okay, that's how long it takes. Because you will not need to charge this phone every 12 hours, every day, every two days. This phone, I'm not even joking, from someone, trust me, that uses a phone in real life all the time. You see all these like tests and comparison. I am using this phone. Granted, light in its first couple of days, but yesterday I charged the device, took it off the charger at like 1 p.m. So I was doing other stuff. And then I looked at it this morning and it was at 89%. It had dropped 11%. Guys, I promise I never charged it overnight. It only dropped 11%. And that was, I've taken a screenshot so you can see the time. The time is now hours on. And let me go into the battery settings. I hope you can see that okay. If you can't, 85%. It's only dropped 4% and I don't know how many hours it's been since I take that screenshot. Guys, I've taken photos and videos on this. I've been using this. I've been setting up and customizing it for this video. It's only dropped 15% in 24 hours. It's unbelievable. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I've got, I have to call it out. I'm not right. I've, I've already told you that the Asus Zenfone 10 isn't perfect. Why would you remove autofocus? Why? Well, I'm on that point. Why wouldn't you have a telephoto lens for an £800 phone? I want at least a 2 or 3x zoom. But we've talked about cameras. The battery is incredible. It's amazing. I would argue that most people can get between two and three days out of this device. Typically, you're getting around 12 to 13 hours of screen on time. Super, super impressive. Mainly because you would never know, because it is so light. I can't tell you how light it is compared to like the Nothing Phone 2, for example. It's just, yeah, very impressive. Well done, Asus. So that's kind of my overview and first impressions. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, but when you compare it to a similarly-ish priced device, Asus get almost everything spot on the money. Nothing are trying way too hard to be different and they're, yeah, they're not managing because the software on this is optimized to within an inch of its life. Every little thing from the hardware slash software features like the side key button, you can turn that into anything. It's obviously a fingerprint scanner. It's got face unlock as well. But once you've unlocked the device using your fingerprint, you can then use the side key to double tap to open a camera or Google Pay, or you can swipe up and down the camera to pull down your notification shade. That's just really cool, like, thought that goes into making your device as simple as possible. Now, ironically as well, what this phone has is a one-handed mode. Now, realistically, it's 5.9 inches. If you need to use the one-handed mode, you've probably got really tiny hands, but they've still added it in when other phones at 6.7 inches don't. 
Asus have really thought about the software and hardware integration, and I'll go into that more in the, the full review. So, if you've got any questions at all about the Zenfone 10, please hit me up in the comments because I want my full review to be tailored for you. I want to answer all your questions because I can see the appeal of this phone. Now, again, I use large phones all the time mostly. But I can completely see why people like MKBHD and Aaron, Mr. Who's the Boss, really like this phone. So Asus are, yeah, doing good things. And this Aurora Green, I think they're calling it. Didn't think I'd like it, but it's actually grown on me. And if this doesn't work for you, what Asus also do is have five different colours, not just two. Sorry, I'm picking on nothing. I'm going to stop that now. Not just two colours, but five. So pretty much a colour that you will like out of those five. So until that full review, and until I do actually do a comparison between these devices, I will see you next time.